Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante and welcome back to Overpain. And we're continuing our Overpain month, as well as this is the second episode we do on Android, and today's patient is Stuart McGrory. Hello, Stuart. And this is his character, a portrait of a character, some kind of zombie, I suppose. My first Photoshop painting. Love the brushes. Oh, thank you, you use my brushes. So yeah, this is one of the two pictures that Stuart submitted. I told him that I'm gonna be working on this one, so let's go ahead and do that. So this time, as you can see, I decided to work on a different program. This is Artflow. It's actually really cool, but has quite a few of little and big differences. Artflow shows the size of the brush when I'm hovering the pen, when in current version of Infinite Painter, you can't do that. You just paint blindly without knowing what what size of the brush you have at the moment. Another cool thing of Artflow is that it supports customizable keyboard shortcuts, like the physical keyboard shortcut that I have right here. I managed to set up hotkeys almost identically to Photoshop, so that's pretty cool. And the downside is pretty much the brush engine. It's somewhat close to what Photoshop has in a sense that there are no blending brushes. And same as in Photoshop, it has a finger tool, but even comparing to the Photoshop shop finger tool this one is just sad so yeah brush engine is generally okay if you forget about the ability to blend at all and well there's a lot of limitations like the existing brush you can only change these parameters for it everything else like how the texture works and the shape of the brush itself that kind of thing you can only set up once when you're creating the brush Anyway, let's not waste too much time on that and let's actually start. So, the resolution of this is pretty good, I believe. Yeah, it's 6K, really. Oh yeah, the quality is pretty nice. So, let's see. I can see there's a lot of influence of my technique in this painting, which is awesome. I'm really happy to see this kind of stuff every time I see it. A pretty rich play of light. There are two opposite light sources from here and the red one from the bottom like this. This. And in between them right here, we can see like a darker area because the lights are opposite. So this side is remaining dark. An awesome dramatic way to show a character, especially a character like this. Even the anatomy of the head is pretty good. The only thing I would change is probably the shape of the lips. It looks really old school, but maybe if that was the goal. He looks a little bit like he's from the Iron Maiden cover. I also love the play with the detail. Like there's a lot of detail and it's all really interesting we have the torn clothes from the time of this guy when he was alive obviously we have all this spider web a whole bunch of wrinkles and everything like it's an interesting painting that you can look at for a little while and actually rediscover it so that's pretty cool now for the stuff that I feel like we should change today number one and it's probably the main thing that I have a problem with when I look at this is the lack of message in the expression like what is this cadaver about like he has everything he has like an awesome explosion of details he has this really dramatic lighting with like a splash of orange something like dust in the back he looks really action like but his face is pretty much like well yeah I'm, I'm here. So that's number one thing. I think we should play a bit with the expression, the pose of the head and the pose of the jaw. If this guy is just dead and he never moves, which is probably the case considering all the spider web, he would probably have his jaw at least open up really wide or something like that. So another thing is a bit of um, casual lighting on the shoulders. Like I really feel that this part should really like go into the dark more because right now this looks kind of weird he is too much here the scene really is just like asking for more of a dynamic lighting when there's like a spot of light on his face but the rest is in the dark and we would see more of his body as just a silhouette which would improve his creepy side and that will I think work pretty well so we'll do more of that especially in here we have a bright background it would work perfectly to 
to come up with uh, like a strong shadow from the head on this side to make this dark and then we would have like a strong edge of the shoulder going into the brighter orange silhouette this is the kind of thing i do a lot always look for a chance to show a silhouette a silhouette of everything that is important in here it will be a really good thing to do also lighting wise i would maybe like increase even more this silhouette like right here which should go a bit darker kind of the way we go here i know there is more reason for this side to be darker because it's like facing downwards a bit more and there's like this whatever is left of the nose is creating a bit of an extra shadow here so there's more sense to have a darker spot here but we can do it here as well, it's fine. A good reason for that is just because uh, the orange light is gonna be further away now and I think this spot could work if it would be a bit darker. Oh, and one more thing about the anatomy of the head. I think this area is lacking some space. We need this area between the eyebrow line and the nose where the hole starts. There should be a little bit more space. It feels a bit too sudden for the nose to start here. And another thing, I think when we are lower the nose, we'll also solve the problem of too long of the upper lip area. I'm planning to fix the lip by a little bit lowering the nose and a little bit lifting up the hole mouth that way will also make the chin a bit bigger which is also a thing that is asking to be done so yeah there are also some thoughts on the brushwork on the way the details are visualized with the brush strokes but I'll talk about it when we're done let's start I think I'm done. So, I changed a lot more than I expected, actually. <laughs> like, this is quite different from what it was before, right? Well, no, it's still the same guy, more or less. So, yeah, let's start with the beginning. At first, I was working on the lighting and fixing the anatomy of this uh, nose-mouth area. The face turned a lot more into, like, a human-like face. And, as you notice, uh, all the details that I was adding made the face a lot darker. And that's because... I was fixing the values the way I always talk about it meaning the nose a little spot on the forehead in the end as well and a little bit of the cheek these are the three areas the only three areas that are actually facing the light source that means everything else has to be darker than those and this is exactly what I was fixing you see only these spots I left as is I darkened the forehead a little bit as well kind of made sense at first but that depends on the angle of the light but yeah I made sure that everything that that is facing sideways and not directly the light source it will be darker so it right away started looking a lot more realistic in a way and by the way the whole thing with the monkey lips it was really exaggerated because of the wrong lighting like in here we can see the upper lip is catching so much light and it makes an impression that that lip is actually like sticking out forward and that's exactly what monkeys have, like they have this lip facing forward like this. So yeah, I did that, I repositioned the shoulders a little bit, like I, uh, I don't know, this felt really unnatural and I wasn't sure what kind of message would this bring, considering like it could be like this guy was hanging on something or whatever, but it's just we don't see it at all and it's bringing the question on where the limbs go and not answering it, so it's not the best way to play too much with the shoulders when it's just a portrait so I kind of like toned it down in that sense but I still made this shoulder a bit higher because I wanted the whole head to be tilted like this you know it makes more sense for the corpsey zombie guy to have the head tilted as well as the mouth open so what I did next is I actually tilted the whole picture 
to have the shoulders horizontal but the head tilted so it would make more sense that he's not doing this but he's actually tilting the head itself so yeah and um, as you can see on this stage I worked a lot more on the values and I introduced the colors I painted the cloth into this uh, dirty red color and I added some uh, kind of like a rotten yellowish greenish tint around the eyes around the lips and just in random places to make him look more colorful you know and I think it really worked well now the next thing I actually did in here a lot aside from really improving by the way th this terminator area I made it stronger in here as well so all of this area doesn't have anything green on it especially in the end you can see only black and orange because orange light can only light up everything with orange so it's not realistic to have all this green in here as well like it's still contaminated with the wrong color so yeah i did that worked a little bit on the background as well to kind of like bring back what we have in here but with the proper brushwork and by proper i mean the same brushwork it's really important, like in here we can see there are big and expressive brush strokes on the character itself, but the background has these really tiny, highly detailed, and not exactly like following the whole style of the picture, these spots everywhere. And the same problem is with the uh, spider web. So it kind of looks like someone took the picture of the zombie and then photoshopped it, adding some textures, you know, it feels like it's alien to the rest of the picture. You should should really try to avoid doing that don't add brush strokes that are really different like suddenly something is super sharp like these textures they're incredibly sharp when this guy's details are a lot more like uh, brushy so that's what I was fixing here I added these uh, kind of like uh, smoother spots as a base to add more details on top and same thing I did this is the stage where I started adding the spider web but as you can see I only added like a fluffy foggy areas where there's like a big mass of tiny tiny spider web collecting together and catching a lot of light and creating like a fog you know when there's a lot of super tiny details they kind of like visually combine together and create like a shape and this is what I was doing I started with that shape in a subtle matter very transparent but already if we blur our eyes we can kind of see that these are the streaks of the spider web so this is how you should build this kind of stuff when something is super detailed start with the main mass just softly adding it on top and finally I added a lot of tiny spider webs everywhere sometimes I was adding like these kind of streaks and sometimes I was even adding these kind of tiny strokes as well and combined together Together, they start forming this illusion of a lot of details and just some of the streaks of the spider web are catching so much light that they actually stand out and we can see rare and separate bright spider web details the details that catch more light are more sharp that's the basic logic for painting like the more color contrast you have that's where you should put your details into as well as here on top of the head I try to add a bit more details to make it a bit sharper because so much light and it kind of like lacks information in here that's not something human eye is used to if there's a lot of light we should see a lot of texture a lot of detail so that's what I brought back like a little bit of uh, tiny wrinkles with tiny spots of the dirt and same with all the spider web like it's creating this mass and and some of the details are catching this sharp light exposing separate streaks of the spider web hopefully it worked pretty well I kind of like the result considering that spider web is generally white and really really translucent to make it look realistic I chose the color for it from the nearest bright surfaces for instance in here the color of the web is maybe this spot or this basically green because in this tiny area there's a lot of reflected light of this green skin so this web will also be lit with this greenish reflection of the light so we painted with green and here we have a 
lot of this rusty color so I painted the spider web with this rusty color and same it goes everywhere on the orange side obviously all the spider web is just orange so yeah this looks really nice and here we have a, like a big depth this spot is getting darker going away because there is no light bouncing around in that area over there because orange light is ending right here and the green light is ending right here so here we have like a dead zone where there is no light so the foggy mass is getting darker in that area but closer to this bottom plane of the cloth that is facing exactly the light source we have a lot of reflected rusty color so we are adding this in here and moving on higher and to the left we have a lot of green skin so we have this more of a green color of the spider web so it's all kind of like bouncing around in different values and different colors and it looks really nice and rich I kind of like this area a lot so yeah I guess this is all I have to say hopefully it looks good while fixing the values I made the whole character noticeably darker but I think this works a lot better this way for this kind of uh, creepy character so yeah this is it tell me guys what you think about the result and hope it was clear about how to make tiny details with bigger strokes this is kind of a actually this is like a thing a common technique that a lot of cool artists use it's called something like small details with big media or something like that like when you paint smaller details with bigger brush for instance we have like a countless amount of super tiny spider web in here but we painted it with just few strokes this is the kind of illusion that is a really cool effect so yeah this is how you do the thing and instead of a whole bunch of super sharp details details in here that are kind of like drag the attention away from the main character and here I have these details spread in a lot more of a rare fashion and in a lower contrast so this feels a lot more dim and works properly as a background not attracting too much attention so the main spot that is attracting attention is here we have a lot of value contrast bright spots and dark eyes and mouth so this is where you look at when you look at the painting in the first second, which is a good thing to do. So yeah, this is it. Thank you, Stuart, for your submission. This was a lot of fun. As you guys know, I really like the dark kind of genre of painting. So this was a really awesome and refreshing experience. So yeah, this was really cool. If you guys want to see your artwork overpainted like this by me, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. But keep in mind that the queue of the submissions is too big at the moment. So basically, at the moment if you really want to submit you can do it but just don't do it right now the queue is so big you will be waiting for too long so yeah this is it was pretty cool really love the process in art flow by the way this was pretty good I wish the hotkeys for changing the brush size would work a lot faster and wouldn't just drag so slowly because it's just slowing me down so much but aside from that it was really cool I really didn't feel the need to use with the blending brush pretty good program and I thank you for watching if you did, I guess you did if you're here, leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, don't watch this video before bed, do whatever you want, and I will see you in the next one, bye! Man, this turned out so creepy, it scares me in the form of possible demonetization.